Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis and you will love economics. So, gross domestic product, also known as GDP, can help tell us the health of our economy. It indicates the size of our economy and the rate of our economic growth or contraction. In other words, it's the indicator that helps us gauge how we are doing with the goal of promoting long-run economic growth. But GDP can be deceiving. It may appear to be doing one thing, but actually might be doing another. Using inaccurate GDP data can provide false conclusions about how an economy is doing, and therefore misguide economists and policymakers, which can make economic problems worse. So, it's really important to use the most accurate GDP data possible. The biggest contributor to false GDP data is inflation. Inflation is the general rising of prices over time. And inflation can cause gross domestic product to appear larger than it actually is, giving us the false conclusion that the economy is growing when it actually isn't. We must take inflation into account when investigating gross domestic product and comparing GDPs to other countries, other years, and to public policy. As a result, there are two types of GDP, nominal GDP and real GDP. Nominal GDP is the dollar value of all final goods and services produced within a country's borders in one year, expressed in a current dollar value, meaning it is unadjusted for inflation. For example, to calculate the nominal GDP in 2015, we would use 2015 prices and 2015 output. To calculate the nominal GDP in 2016, we would use 2016 prices and 2016 output. Real GDP is the dollar value of all final goods and services produced within a country's borders in one year, expressed in constant dollar value, meaning it is adjusted for inflation. When comparing GDP between two years to investigate whether an economy has experienced growth or contraction, nominal GDP can be inaccurate. Because if inflation has occurred between those two years, nominal GDP can increase due to an increase in price level, even if the economy contracted or production remained the same nationwide. In other words, nominal GDP can increase simply because goods and services are more expensive, not because the economy actually increased its output and experienced GDP growth. As a result, the most accurate way to gauge economic growth or contraction is with real GDP. And in order to calculate real GDP, Gross domestic product must be counted using a constant dollar value for every year of comparison. Using a constant dollar value eliminates the effects of inflation and tells us the real value of what a country produced in a given year. For example, when using price level and domestic output for the United States in 2015, the U.S. nominal GDP in 2015 is $5 million. When using price level and domestic output for 2016, the United States nominal GDP in 2016 is $10 million. Nominally, it appears that the United States has doubled its GDP between 2015 and 2016. However, we can also see that price levels doubled between those two years. In order to determine whether or not the United States truly experienced economic growth in 2016, we need to use a constant dollar value and adjust for inflation that has occurred between the two years, thus giving us the United States real GDP for 2016. To find the 2016 real GDP for the United States, we must use the 2016 domestic output and multiply it by the 2015 prices. When adjusting for inflation, we can conclude that the United States real GDP in 2016 was $5 million. As a result, we can conclude that the United States gross domestic product in 2016 remained stagnant, meaning that it did not produce any more goods and services than it did in 2015. And the apparent growth in nominal GDP was due entirely to inflation. In this example, we'll analyze GDP data for the country of Germany. When using prices and domestic output for 2015, we can determine that Germany's nominal GDP in 2015 was 10 million euro. When using prices and domestic output for 2016, we can determine that Germany's nominal GDP in 2016 was 12 million euro. Nominally, it would appear that Germany's GDP experienced 2 million euro of economic growth in 2016. But to truly determine if the economy grew in Germany, we must find the 2016 real GDP by using 2016 domestic output and 2015 price levels. When adjusting for inflation, we can determine that Germany's real GDP in 2016 was 7.5 million euro. 
When comparing nominal GDP in 2015 with real GDP in 2016, we can conclude that the German GDP contracted by 2.5 million euro in 2016. Nominally, it appeared Germany experienced economic growth, but that was due entirely to inflation. In fact, Germany experienced economic contraction in 2016. This is a great example of how inflation can make nominal GDP data inaccurate and why it is important to find real GDP when determining whether or not a country is accomplishing the goal of promoting long-run economic growth. Real GDP gives you the real story. Real GDP is by far the most accurate measurement of a nation's standard of living. The standard of living is the quality of life in a society, measured in part by how well an economy is doing and taking into account a nation's population size. It tells us, in general, how well the people of the nation are living, based on the goods and services produced in the country for the purpose of satisfying their utility. The higher your real GDP, the greater the needs and wants of your people are satisfied. Because of this, a nation's standard of living is best measured by changes in its real GDP per capita. Real GDP per capita can be calculated by dividing a nation's real GDP output by the size of its population. It identifies the quantity of goods and services attributed to and made available for each member of society. In short, the real GDP output per person in the population. It is well documented that population sizes are rising everywhere around the globe. As a result, in order to increase the standard of living year to year, real GDP output must grow at a pace that is faster than population growth. Let's take a look. Over the course of one year, if a nation increases its real GDP output, and its population size remains unchanged, then it experienced an increase in its real GDP per capita, and therefore its standard of living. If that same nation decreased its real GDP output with an unchanging population, then it experienced a decrease in real GDP per capita and a decrease in its standard of living. If real GDP grows over the course of a year by 5%, and population grows over the course of that same year by only 3%, the country experienced an increase in real GDP per capita and therefore an increase in the standard of living, because the real GDP growth outpaced population growth. But if population grows by 3% over the course of a year, and real GDP only increases by 2%, then that country experienced a decrease in its real GDP per capita, and therefore a decrease in its standard of living, because population size grew at a faster pace than real GDP output. As a result, every member of the population has fewer goods and services to meet their utility. This map shows us all the real GDP per capita of each country around the world. Countries in dark blue have the highest real GDP per capita and therefore the highest standard of living. Countries in yellow, orange, and brown have lower real GDP per capita and therefore lower standards of living. As you can see, real GDP per capita varies greatly around the world. And here's why. Real GDP is affected by the availability and quantity of natural resources, by the availability of capital, and by economic systems. Notice how countries with higher real GDP per capita are concentrated in industrial areas of the world, where productivity, resource availability, and technological innovation is highest. These factors promote stable real GDP expansion and GDP growth rates usually outpace population growth. The lowest real GDP per capita are concentrated in areas of the world with political instability, which can lead to the inefficient use of scarce resources and can slow productivity. They're also concentrated in areas that have traditionally lacked industrialization and capital. Some countries, like China and India, actually rank in the top 10 highest real GDPs in the world. So why the low standard of living? It's because their populations are well over a billion, and population growth can easily outpace production of output in each country. This means that each country has fewer real GDP goods and services with which to meet the needs and wants of their citizens, leading to a lower standard of living. And that's real and nominal GDP. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in micro and macroeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my gross domestic product video and you can click here for my inflation video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on View the Law of Economics.